what is up everybody welcome back to mount mograph summit 76 rigging shadows inside of adobe after effects as always my name is matt we're gonna do a video today today's video looks lame but is cool so what we're gonna do is rig a shadow uh to stay with a ball and stay on the ground plane and this is all happening in real time and it's resizing all based on code so i'm not a coder i don't really like math but somehow I do write code and I do that because it really helps animation and that's something I like. So what we're going to do is control a whole bunch of properties with some simple expressions and it should give you an idea of how powerful code can be when you start combining it with your animations because it makes your life easier. It's always so much better to change one thing than have to go back and change three. So even though this is a stupid example, I think it's actually super helpful. So let's jump into it and try to have fun with this boring content. So let's create a new composition here. Um, I like to do a square just because that's the view I have here. And the first thing we're going to want to do is just create a circle on our screen or a square. Um, but let's do a circle. So here's my circle. I'll turn the stroke off because I don't really want to see that. And we have something that looks similar to what we started with. So I'm going to put the anchor point in the middle of this ball here. And the first thing we want to do since we're making a ball is make it so it can't go past a certain point. So, you know, if you're animating, you can set keyframes on your position and you can continually go and just make sure that you're not going past that certain point you set a keyframe for. So check your number here, go back in time and make sure your numbers are the same just so like you're not, you know, going too far down or whatever it may be. But, you know, why don't we make this easier on ourselves and just like set a limit of the floor or basically set a floor. So by doing this, what we're going to do is create a slider first. Um, this is from the expression controls. Drop it onto our layer and we're going to call this ground. And then from there, we're going to go and hold option, click our position and set a couple little uh, lines of code here to make it so we have a ground plane. So the first thing we want to do is uh, like grab our X position. So our X position, uh, we can do like original uh, X position equals, uh, we'll just drag this little dude. Um, so your pick whip, we're just gonna grab the first property here. If you grab the position, you're gonna see we don't get a number at the end. And if you grab the first number, you get a zero at the end. And if you grab the second number, you get a one at the end. So let me actually delete that because that was a stupid thing. But basically it's an array. So if you grab this, you're going to grab both properties. If you grab just one of the properties, you're only grabbing that. So that's what we're going to want. So let's try that again. Um, original X position. And we want to grab our first property, which is the X position. Um, and we're going to just pick whip that. And there it is. That's our first line of code. And I really didn't type too much. So now what we want to do is grab our second um, property because we want to build an array with different values in it. So we're going to grab our Y position. And now we have two little uh, lines of code here. So if I was to say uh, that the ground equals, here we go, um, whatever the slider value is, so right now it's zero, we now have three different values. We have our original properties and then we have our ground floor. So what are we going to do with these? Well, we're going to compare them all together. And since we really want to set a ground plane instead of like a side to side, a wall or anything, what we can type is if the original um, Y position is less than the ground. So you're saying like right now it's at zero and my Y position is at uh, 1,254. Uh, then we're going to want to do something. So right here, I'll say if it is smaller than that, we're going to say that the original position, uh, and by smaller, it actually means like up on the screen. It doesn't mean down. That'd be getting bigger um, because it starts at zero, zero over here. So um, I think I said that right. Yeah, I did. So it's it's kind of looks wrong, but it is right. So we're going to say um, the original X position, and this is like building our array back. So since the position property is two values, we need to do um, brackets and then put our values in here. So we're going to say just stay normal. So we're going to say the uh, original X position equals the original Y position. So let's see what happens here. Well, it's going to look like a whole bunch of nothing happens. Uh, and we also get a little broken expression. So what we need to do is declare a second uh, like like variable or option to go to. So if it is bigger, we need to do something else. So we'll go here and we're going to say, we're going to build our little brackets and we're going to say the original position, the X position is now 
also being uh, bu built into an array with the ground uh, uh, number here. So that's going to be our slider value as we change it. So now it's going to jump and I'm not going to be able to move it. It's now jumped up to zero, uh, which is this Y position up here. And I can't move it. I can go like back and forth, but I can't go up and down. So as we change our slider, you're going to see that now I'm able to set a ground plane. And with this, it's pretty sweet. Um, it, you're able to do this. So the one thing to note is that even though this number says 1510, if I turn off my expression, this is at 886. And as I move it down to like 1,872, it's gonna snap back. So sometimes when you're first setting your ground plane, if your number is already like huge like that, it's gonna feel like it's sticky. Like you almost have to drag up. And as you can see, my number is changing over here um, before the expression. So you almost have to make sure that your number is, is close enough to the ground plane to start. Otherwise, it's gonna almost feel like the it's sticky. So let's go ahead and just set like our ground plane. Um, I'm gonna set it at well, you can also just copy this number. So I like where that is. I'll paste it on there and that's my ground plane. So now it looks like the ball is bouncing and this little line of code has made it so now I don't ever have to really go back and check my um, position properties uh, for that. So we've set like a limit. So that's great. So let's name this source um, like ball. Uh, it's gonna be the ball layer awesomeness. Uh, and now what we wanna do is rig up this little shadow to stay with the ball and we're going to use very similar bits of code but uh, we're going to change a couple little things to make this all work together so what we're going to do is maybe just create a rectangle uh, just draw it underneath our circle here and change the fill color to whatever you want I'll go with the nice black color change the opacity a touch and just move my anchor point to the middle area and just put it up kind of where the ball is. Um, it's on top of the ball, so I'm gonna put it behind it because it's a shadow and in this stylized world that we're doing. And so with this, let's go ahead and type shadow. So the first thing we wanna do is make it so the positional data of this stays always with where the ball is. So as the ball like lifts up and moves, the shadow is gonna stay with it. So if we hop on over to our position property for our uh, ball here, we'll hold option and uh, write another little expression here and this is uh, very similar to the first one what we're gonna do is just say original Y position so we're gonna grab the original Y data here so that's gonna be this one because we want to be able to just move it wherever the heck we want uh, we're gonna put it right there and then we can type another line of code and we're gonna call it ball X position and we're gonna type equals and then we're just going to pick whip the positional property for the ball um, and we want the X data this time instead of the Y so we'll grab the X data and as you can see we get a zero for the um, position and then we're gonna just uh, type our little array here uh, so brackets and then we're gonna do ball X position comma uh, original Y position so we're gonna be taking the X position of the ball uh, and we're gonna be taking the Y position of our layer and putting those two together. So now what we have is something that moves almost like that Pong game. So if you really wanted to make this optimized, what you could do is make sure your ball layer awesomeness is selected and just go to your Y position and make it so that this is actually equal to the ground slider. So now if I change where my, uh, my ground is, it's going to change also where the, um, Oh, in theory here, so I actually messed that up a touch. We need to um, do a little bit of changing with this value, but you could say like minus uh, 200 or something. Just find out like how um, the, the diameter of the ball is. So minus 200 or plus 200. I, I was just kidding there. So let's do plus 200 and see if we're starting to get something better. So maybe plus 100. Uh, let's see maybe plus 50. We just got to find that right number to make it look about right. And I'll show you why that's going to be really cool. So let's pretend that's great. And what the heck here? I'm trying. Uh, here we go. And plus 200. So that's close enough. So now what happens is as I change my ground, the shadow is going to be able to change with it. So it's actually a little bit bigger than that. So maybe plus 210. I just had to find the right number. Uh, in there so we can even go like maybe plus 230 I'm trying and there we go so now we have like a ground plane 
So even if the ball is in the air and I want to change where my ground plane is, I can do that with one slider uh, without having to worry about where it's going to go. So, you know, we'll put it down at the bottom here and now I have a wonderful ground plane. So the next thing is as the, the, the distance that the ball is away from the ground, the shadow is actually going to get smaller. So what we need to do is write a little bit more code to make it so that as the ball goes up in the air, the, the shadow is going to shrink. So let's jump to our scale property for our shadow. Click option and we're gonna write a little bit of code and then we're just about done with this uh, cool little uh, thing to do. So what we wanna do is first grab the height. So this is something that we don't wanna change and just like position, the scale is also um, like an array. So we are going to be taking two values, changing them and then putting them back together into the little brackets. So let's start with maybe typing like original height and just pick whipping our original height, which is going to be the second property here. And there we go. So we'll add a semicolon, to make it all stable. And then we're going to go and once again, grab the ball position. So we'll do the ball height. Um, so we'll do uh, Y position and we'll pick whip the height. So that's going to be the second uh, little array value, also a one. And then we'll go down and what we want to do is set like, um, I guess you would call it like a height limit. So, you know, like at a certain point, you don't want to keep this thing getting smaller. Um, eventually it'll just lock. So what we want to do is maybe find out how the highest the ball will be in this, um, uh, little scene here. And right around there, if you look at the number, you can also unclick the expression. It's about 328. And I think that's a pretty good number. So you could also make a slider for this, but I'll be lazy and I'm just going to type uh, the height limit, I guess, uh, just physically. So we'll do height limit and we're going to say this equals uh, 342 if you'd like that number and uh, set another semicolon. So now what we're going to do with this is basically the same expression we did before um, right up here. So in fact, why don't we just copy it and we'll just change some stuff. So we'll paste that in there. And we're going to say the ball position, so we'll just copy and paste. If that is less than the height limit, so that's 342. Um, but I think in this, we would, uh, well, we'll have to change a couple of other things. So I'll actually delete this. And uh, we're going to say the ball position then would equal the height limit. So what we're saying is that if the ball is at any point um, smaller than 342, so up in the zeros or wherever it may be, just make it equal to the height limit, which is going to be 342. So now what I have is, well, we're not really able to visualize it, but once the 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 ball hits about here and I go up, the, the value that is changing won't change anymore. So we've basically set a ground plane for that value, but up here, so like a sky plane, um, if you want to get crazy. So now what we want to do is call out the difference of the height. We need to figure some stuff out. So what we're going to do is type height wrong or right, depending on how you spell. Um, and we'll do height difference. Um, we're going to say this equals um, math dot absolute. So this is an expression we used in the last video as well. Um, what this does is calculates the difference between two values and just gives you the actual like difference of the two values. So what we're going to do is type like the ball position um, ball y position minus the height limit um, and we're going to have that absolute data to work with so what we've done and actually another little little tip here is if you do command t um, just to bring up a text uh, layer if you ever need to visualize like what kind of values you're getting you can click option um, to add an expression actually to your text here and we'll just uh, copy this stuff paste it here um, and we did this so we want, what we'll be seeing now is the height difference. So as I, in theory, change this, oh, we do need to actually make this two other things here. So we would need to change uh, this first property, the original height of the, I'm just kind of thinking this through as we go. So this would be the shadow. So we just have to switch that name and then add a period after it. Um, and so this is going to be calculating everything for us. So this little text thing will actually show us the value as it changes. And so now as it goes up past that 
that limit we set, it just kind of snaps to zero. So um, that's a little tip if you ever need to visualize your data. Uh, but anyway, let's jump back to this because uh, I'm sure this video is dragging for a lot of people. So now we have our height difference. So let's make a little little comparison. So we're going to say if the, if the height difference um, diff is like less than zero, we are going to do something. Um, if the height difference is less than zero, we're going to say a new variable, like uh, maybe new width um, of our shadow is going to equal the height difference, uh, maybe like divided by, let's call it 12, because we don't really need to have like, those numbers were pretty big when we were looking at that text thing. So you can divide it by whatever, maybe 10, maybe 12, um, whatever you like. And we'll actually put this into um, parentheses here we're going to times it by negative one. Um, and uh, we're doing this uh, because just like in the last video, we need to have like uh, a certain point where it inverts the data so it doesn't change anymore. So uh, that was really poorly explained, I'm trying. But here, I'll sh uh, it's easier to show if we can get this next line of code in here. So um, we'll type new width equals, actually we can just copy and paste the top one. We're basically saying um, do this if that's the case, if it's not the case, just times it by negative one. So it's the same data either way. And now from there, we can see what happens, which is still nothing. So it looks like we need just a touch more code, but I promise this should be good. What we need to do is add one more comparison. So we now have this new variable called new width and based on um, the number that's changing, it's either the negative or a positive. So what we need to do is do if the new width is let's see uh, like less than 20 we need to do something else so 20 is just like a number I just randomly picked and that's like going to be the width of the shadow so the smallest the shadow can be um, so if at any point this comparison that we made is smaller than 20 uh, we'll be once again doing something and if it's bigger then we can do something else so if it is smaller we're going to just kind of set that limit again so we're gonna say 20 and then we're going to take the original height. So scale is, like I said, an array. So we need two values. So we have 20 because if it's smaller than 20, we want it to lock out at 20. And then we want to take the original height. So the Y position isn't getting smaller. So now as I go up, let's see here. Um, looks like I need one more bit of code. We'll say else. Um, we'll say uh, the new width and the original height is good to go. So in this case, we can just paste that in there and let's see what's going wrong so we have the original height oh well here's my first problem is i couldn't type that so that's probably why none of those examples were working um but yeah so the, there needed to be a t at that top um height so now as i go up it it like will change it moves and it'll resize based on my height of the the circle here so what that number i picked was 20 and Obviously 20 looks a little bit small. So when the ball's up here, um, we set that limit because like you don't wanna be going into the negatives, but also maybe that's a bit too small. So I could just go in here and change this 20 to like a 40 and also change this to a 40 or something. And now when I do that, it's going to, now the smallest size or the minimum size of the shadow is gonna be that height. So there we go. Um, this is like how you can rig a shadow and just make all your animation so much easier to do. And now I can do this sweet like bouncing ball effect or whatever. So um, yeah, that's pretty nice. Uh, pretty nice thing to, to have there. And uh, it just should make your animation easier. So this is like really a stupid example, um, but just as a quick other example of like what you could do um, is, well, I mean like with character legs or something, if you wanted to set like a ground plane so they're not like dipping too far far into the floor, you can do stuff like that. And, um, you know, maybe you could also do stuff with like Gaussian blur and you could start linking that up uh, to with like the same kind of expression. So like as it gets higher, maybe it gets more blurry. Um, and yeah, so I think code can be really powerful with motion graphics. Um, I hope you found this video helpful and really, really nerdy. But uh, yeah, so start using code with motion graphics. It's really fun uh, sometimes. Anyway, peace.